In this video, we're going to cover what is arguably the single most important concept in all of statistics. And maybe, well, I mean, if you go into almost any scientific field, you might even argue it's the single most important concept. And I've actually told people that it's, you know, it's, it's kind of sad that they don't cover this, you know, in the core curriculum. Everyone should know about this because it touches on every single aspect of our lives, and that's the normal distribution, or the Gaussian distribution, or the bell curve. And just to kind of give you a, a preview of what it is, and you know, my preview will actually make it seem pretty um, strange, but as we go through this video, hopefully you'll get a little bit more of an intuition of what it's all about. But the, defi the, the, the Gaussian distribution, or the normal distribution, they're just the, they're two words for the same thing. It, it was actually Gauss who came up with it. To, I think he was, he was uh, studying astronomical phenomenon when he did. But it's a probability density function, just like you know we studied the Poisson distribution. It's just like that. And just to give you the preview, it looks like this. That the probability of getting any x, and it's a class of, of, of probability distribution functions, just like the binomial distribution is and the Poisson distribution is based on a bunch of parameters. But it's equal to, and this is how you would traditionally see it written in a lot of textbooks. And if we have time, I'd like to rearrange the algebra just so you get a little bit more intuition of how it all works out, or uh, maybe we could get some insights on, on where it all came from. I'm not going to prove it in this video. That's a little bit beyond our scope, although I do want to do it. And there's actually some really neat mathematics that might show up in, in you know, if, you, if you're a math lead, there's something called Sterling's formula, which you might want to do a Wikipedia search on, which is really fascinating. It, it approximates factorials with um, essentially a continuous function, but I, I won't go into that right now. But the the binomial, I'm sorry, the normal distribution is one over. This is how it's normally written: the standard deviation times the square root of two pi times e to the minus one half. And you say, well, there's I like to write it this way; it's easier to remember. Times whatever value we're trying to get minus the mean of our of our distribution divided by the standard deviation of our distribution squared. And so if you think about it, actually, just is a good thing to just notice right now. This is how far I'm from the mean, and we're dividing that by the standard deviation of whatever our distribution is. And this is a preview of actually a normal distribution that I've plotted. The purple line right here is a normal distribution. And just so you know, the whole exercise here, I know I jump around a little bit, is to show you that the normal distribution is a good approximation for the binomial distribution, and vice versa. If the binomial distribution, if you take enough trials in your binomial distribution, we'll, we'll touch on that in a second. But it's, it's the intuition of this term right here, I think, is interesting. Because we're saying, how far are we away from the mean? We're dividing by the standard deviation. We're saying, so this whole term right here is how many standard deviations we are away from the mean. And this is actually called the standard z-score. One thing I found in, in statistics is there's a lot of words and a lot of definitions, and they all sound very fancy, you know, the standard z-score. But the underlying, the underlying concept is, pretty pretty straightforward you know let's say i had a probability distribution and you know i get some x value that's out here and it's three and a half standard deviations away from the mean then its standard z score is three and a half but anyway let's let's focus on the purpose of this video so that's what the the normal distribution i guess the probability density function for the normal distribution looks like but how did it get there i guess even more importantly i want by the end of this video, you should at least feel comfortable that this is a good approximation for the binomial distribution if, the bi if you take enough trials. And that's what's fascinating about the normal distribution, is that if you have the sum, and I'll do a whole other video on the central limit theorem, but if you have the sum of many, many independent trials you know, approaching infinity, that the distribution of those, even though the distribution of each of those trials might have been non-normal, but the distribution of the sum of all of those trials approaches the normal distribution. And I'll talk more about that later. But that's why it's such a good uh, distribution to kind of assume for a lot of underlying phenomenon if you're kind of modeling weather patterns or drug interactions. And you know, we'll, we'll talk about where it might work well and where it might not work so well. Like you know, sometimes people might assume things like a normal distribution in finance. And we see in the financial crisis that's, that's led to a lot of things blowing up. But anyway. Let's let's get back to this. And this is a spreadsheet right here. I just made a black background. And you can download it at, let me write it right here, at khanacademy.org. Khanacademy.org 
slash downloads. And actually, if you just do that, you'll see all of the downloads. I haven't put it there yet. I'm going to do it right after I record the video. This downloads slash normal distribution, normal distribution, distribution, that's distribution, dot XLS. If you just go up to khanacademy.org slash download slash, you'll see all of the things there. And you'll see that this, this spreadsheet. And I encourage you to play with it. And maybe do other uh, spreadsheets where you uh, experiment with it. So this spreadsheet, what we do is it's, it's we're doing a game where, let's say I'm sitting, I'm on a street, and I flip a coin. I flip a completely fair coin. If I get heads, let's say if I, this is heads, I take a step backwards or let's say a step to the left. And if I get a tails, I take a step to the right. right? So in general, I always have a 50, this is a completely fair coin. I have a 50% chance of taking a step to the left. And I have a 50% chance of taking a step to the right. So your intuition there is, you know, if I told you I took a, you know, a thousand flips of the coin, you're like, you know, you're just going to be you're going to keep going left and right. If by chance you get a bunch of heads, you might end up really kind of moving over to the left. If you get a bunch of tails, you might move over to the, the right. And we learned already that the, the odds of getting a bunch of tails or many, 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 many more tails than heads is a lot lower than you know things kind of being in the equal, it being equal or you know close to equal. And right here, what I've done, this, let me oh let me turn into the. Uh, let me scroll down a little bit. Oh, this. Okay, I don't want to lose the whole thing. All right. So what I've done right here is I have this little assumption here, and I encourage you to fill that out and change it as you like. This is the number of steps I take. This is the mean number of left steps. And all I did is I got the probability, and we figured out the mean of the binomial distribution. The mean of the binomial distribution is Essentially, the probability of taking a left step times the total number of trials, and so that's equal to 5. That's where that number comes from. And then the variance, and I, I'm not sure if I went over this. I need to prove this to you if I have, and I'll make a whole other video on, what the, on, on the variance of the binomial distribution. But the variance is essentially equal to the number of trials, 10, times the probability of taking the left step, or kind of a successful trial. That's what you know, I'm defining left as a successful trial, but it could be right as, as well, times the probability of you know, 1 minus a successful trial or, or non-successful trial. In this case, they're equally probable, and that's where I got the 2.5 from. And that's all in the spreadsheet. If you actually you know, click on the cell and look at the, the actual formula, I did that, although sometimes when you see it in Excel, it's a little bit confusing. And this is just the square root of that number, right? The standard deviation is just the square root of the variance. So that's just the square root of 2.5. And so when if you look here, this says, OK, what is the probability that I take 0 steps? So I take a total of 10 steps, just to understand the spreadsheet. So if I take a total of 10 steps, what is the probability that I take 0 left steps? Well, and just to make clear, if I take 0 left steps, that means I must have taken 10 right steps. And I calculate this probability, and this, I should have drawn maybe a line here. This is the binomial, I calculate this using the binomial distribution. And how do I do that? Well, let's, let's, it's, I say, what is the probability that I take? Well, I take a total of 10 steps. So let me actually switch colors just out of, just to make things interesting. Let's see, do they have a purple here? I'll do a blue. So the bi blue for binomial. So what I have here is how many total steps? I'm going to take, so there's a total of 10 steps, so 10 factorial. That's kind of the number of trials I have. Of that, I'm choosing 0 to go left. So 0 factorial divided by 10 minus 0 factorial. Right? This is 10 choose 0. I'm choosing 0 left steps of the total 10 steps I'm taking times the probability of 0 left steps. So it's the probability of a left step. I'm only taking 0 of them times the probability of a right step. And I'm taking 10 of those. So that's where this number came from, this 0 0.001. That's what the binomial distribution tells us. And then this one, similarly, is 10 factorial over 1 factorial over 10 minus 1 factorial. And that's how I get that one. And once again, if you click on the actual cell, you'll see that explained. So what this is, we've done this multiple times. It's just the binomial calculation. And then right here, after this 
line right here, you can almost ignore it. And I did that so that I can do a bunch of different scenarios. So for example, if I were to go to my spreadsheet, if I were to go to my spreadsheet, and if instead of doing 10 steps, I were to want I wanted to do whoops, I should use it. If I were to do 20 steps, then everything changes. And that's why down here there's, you know, a after you get to kind of a certain point, the whole thing just uh kind of repeats. And I'll let you think about why I do that. Maybe I should have made a, a cleaner spreadsheet. But it doesn't affect the, the, the scatter plot chart that I did. And so this plot in blue, and you can't see it because the, the purple is almost right over it. Actually, let me make it smaller so that you can see. So if I only took, let's say I only took six, let's say I only took six steps. Well, it's still hard to see the difference between the two. And then once again, I mean, the whole point of this is to see that the the normal distribution is a good approximation, but they're so close that they you you can't even see the difference on my. Let's see, if you only took four steps, okay, I think you can see here. The blue here is definitely. Let me get my screen drawer on. So let me draw this. Yeah, the blue curve is right around there, right? So this is the binomial. There's only a few points here, right? The, the points only go up to here. This is if I take zero steps left, one step left, two steps left, three steps left, four steps left, and then I plot it, and then I say what's the probability using the binomial distribution. And then this is my final position, right? If I take zero steps to the left, then I take four steps to the right, so my final position is at four, so that's this scenario right here. Let me switch my color back to yellow, it's easier to see. Yellow. If I take four steps to the left, I take zero steps to the right, and so my final position is going to be at minus four, right? It's going to be here. If I take an equal amount of both, so that's this scenario, then I I'm neutral. I'm just stuck in the middle right here, right? I take I take two steps to the right, and then I take two steps to the left, or vice versa. I take two steps to the left, and then I take two steps right, and I end up right there. And so you, hopefully that makes a little sense of how this. Let me see my my phone is ringing. Let me. No, no, I'll ignore that. Because the normal distribution is so important. And actually, my, my nine-week-old son is watching, so this is the first time I have a, a live audience, but I thought he might pick up something about the normal distribution. But anyway, this is, so the blue line right here, and I'll trace it maybe in yellow just so you can see it, is the plot of the binomial distribution. And you know I connected the lines, but you're often, you see the binomial distribution looks something more like this, where you know this is the probability of getting to minus 4. This is the probability of going to minus 2. This right here is the probability of ending up nowhere. And then this is the probability, see where is, the, actually you know the point is right here, right here. This is the probability of ending up 2 to the right. And then this is the probability of ending 4 to the right, right? That's, this is the binomial distribution. I just plotted these points right here, right? This is 0.375, this is 0.375, that's the height of that. Now, what I wanted to show you is that the, the normal distribution approximates the binomial distribution. So this right here, I wanted to say, what, what does the normal distribution tell me is the probability of ending up, of ending up with, with exactly zero left steps. And then this is a little bit tricky because the normal distribution so the 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 binomial distribution is a discrete probability distribution you could just look at this chart or look here and you say what is the probability of ending up to you know having exactly um, having exactly let's say one left step and three right steps which puts me right here well you just look at this chart and you say oh that that puts me right there there's I just read that probability it's actually 0.25 and I say oh I have a 25 percent chance of ending up two steps to the what, what example was that? Oh yeah, two steps to the right. There's a 25% chance. The normal distribution function is a continuous probability distribution. So it's a continuous curve. You know, it looks like that. It's the bell curve, and it goes off to infinity, and starts approaching zero on both sides. Right? It looks something like that. But this is a continuous probability distribution. You can't just take a point here and you say, what's the probability that I end up two feet to the right? Because if you just say that, there's the actual the probability of being exactly, and you should watch uh, my video on, on probability density functions, but the probability of being exactly two feet to the right, exactly, I mean, I'm talking to the atom, is close to zero. So you actually have to specify a range around this. And what I assume in this is I assume that within, essentially, a half a foot in either direction, 
right? If we're talking about feed. So to figure that out, what you do, what I did here is I took the value of the probability density function there, right? And I'll show you how I evaluated that. And then I multiplied that by 1. So it gives me this area. And I use that as an approximation for this area. The, the, if you really wanted to be particular about it, what you would do is you would take the integral of, the, of this curve between this point and this point as a better approximation. We'll, go that, we'll do that in the future. But right now, I just want to give you the intuition that the binomial distribution really does converge to the normal distribution. So how did I, what is this number right here? Well, I said, what is the probability? Well, let me, let me do something like this. What is, let's say this one right here, because I don't want to use the 0. So what is the probability that I take one left step? I kind of used left steps as, as, as a success. So what is the probability of 1? And that equaled 1 over the standard deviation. When I only took four steps, the standard deviation was 1. So 1 over 1. Actually, let me change this, because I think it might be, it might be uh, let me change it to a higher number. Let's see, if I make this. I don't know. Let me go back to the example where I'm at 10. All right. So if this is at 10, let me go back to my drawing tool. OK. So this calculation right here, I don't know, let me do this calculation. Actually, even better, let me do this calculation right here. All right. So what's the probability that I have two left steps? And if I have two left steps, I took a total of 10 steps, so I'm going to have eight right steps, and that puts me 6 to the right, so that's you know this point right here. So what's that probability? How do I figure this out using the probability density function? How do I figure this out? Well, I say the probability of taking two left steps, that's how I calculated it. If you actually click on the cell, you'll see that, is equal to 1 over the standard deviation, 1.581. And I just directly referenced the cell there. Divide times the square root of 2 pi. And you know, I'll go on, you know, I always go on in awe of the whole notion of e to the i pi is equal to negative 1 and all of that. But this is another amazing thing that all of a sudden we have this, you know, as we take uh, many, many, many trials, we have this formula that has e and pi in it and square roots. But once again, these two numbers just keep showing up. And it tells you something about, I don't know, the order of the universe with a capital O. But let's see, so times e to the minus 1 half times x. Well, the x is what we're trying to calculate, you know, two successes. So to be to be to have exactly two left so it's 2 minus the mean. So the mean is 5 2 minus 5 divided by the standard deviation divided by 1.581 all of that squared that's where this calculation came from. And so, and if you really, and, and so I told you in the last one, I mean, this just tells you, this right here just tells me this value up here. And I assume that the probability, if I want to know this exact probability, it's, a, it's the area of this. And if I just take one line, the area is 0. So to, to be exactly 2 feet away using the pro, remember, I mean, in this case, you, will, you can only be 2 feet away because we're taking very exact steps. But what the normal distribution is, it's a continuous probability uh, density function. So it can tell us, what's the probability of being 2.183 uh, feet away? Which obviously is only, it can only happen if we're kind of taking infinitely small steps every time. But that's where its use is. It happens kind of when you start taking an infinite number of steps. But it can approximate the discrete. And the way I approximate it is I say, oh, what's the probability of being within a foot of that? And so I multiply this height, which I calculate here, times be one, so you know, let's say this has a base of one to calculate this area, which I use as an approximation. So you just multiply that times one, and that's what you get here. And I just want to show you, I mean, even with just ten trials, the curves for the you know the normal distribution here is in purple, and the binomial distribution is in blue. So they're almost right on top of each other. I mean, they started when the, when the number of steps I took was a little bit smaller. They, they were, and as you take many, 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 many more steps, they almost converge right on top of each other. And I encourage you to play with this spreadsheet. And actually, let me show you that they converge. So I made another. There's a convergence worksheet on this spreadsheet as well. If you click on the bottom tab for on, on convergence. And I did this is the same thing, but I just wanted to show you what happens at any given 
point. So let's say that I wanted to, let me explain this part, this spreadsheet to you. So this is, you know, what's the probability of moving left, right? This is, so this is just saying, I'm just fixing a point. What's the probability, and you could change this, of my final position being 10? And then this tell, essentially tells you that if, if I take 10 moves, then for my final position to be 10 to the right, I have to take 10 right moves and 0 left moves. And that's a typo right there. It should be moves, not moves. If I take 20 moves to end up 10 moves to the right, then I have to make 15 right moves and 5 left moves. And likewise, if I take a total of 80 moves, if I take 80 flips of my coin to make me go left to right, in order to end up 10 to the right, I have to take 45 right moves and 35 left moves in any order. And it'll end up with 10 to the right. So what I want to figure out is, as I start taking you know, a, a bunch of total moves, it's like my total moves, I mean, here I max it out at 170, but you could kind of say is, you know, if I started flipping this coin an infinite number of times, I want to figure out what's the probability that my final position is 10 to the right. And what I want to show you is, is that as you take more and more moves, the normal distribution becomes a better and better approximation for the binomial distribution. So right here, this calculates the binomial probability, just the way we did it before. And you could look at the cell to figure it out. You know, this says 10. You know, I want to. I use left moves as a success. So this is 10 choose. You know, let me. You know, this is 10 choose zero, and we know what that is. That's 10 factorial over zero factorial over 10 minus zero factorial, times 0.5 to the zero times 0.5 to the 10. That's where that number comes from. If I go to, let's say, this one right here, this one right here is calculated. Actually, let me write it out because I think it's interesting. I have a total of 60 total moves. So it's 60 factorial over, I have to have 25 left moves. So 25 factorial, I'm 60 minus 25 factorial times the probability of a left move, and I have 25 of them, times the probability of a right move, and I have 35 of those. Right? So that's where each of those are. so that's just where the binomial, what the binomial probability distri distribution will tell us. And then it figures out the mean and the variance for each of those circumstances. And you could look at the formula, but the mean is just the probability of having a left move times the total number of moves. The variance is probability of left times probability of right times total number of moves. And then the normal probability, once again I just use the normal probability I just use the, the, so I approximate it the same way. So for example, in this situation right here, and Excel has a, a normal distribution function, but I actually typed in the formula because I wanted to kind of see that, you know, what, what was under, under the covers for that uh, function that Excel actually has. So that I actually say, what's the probability of 25 left moves? Oh no, let's see, no, 45 left moves. So I say the probability of 45 left moves is equal to 1 over the standard deviation. So in this situation, the standard deviation is the square root of 25. So it's 5 divided times 2 pi times e to the minus 1 half times 45 minus the mean minus 50 over the standard deviation, which we figured out was 5 squared. So that tells me the value of what the, the normal distribution tells me for this situation with this standard deviation and this mean. And then I multiply that by 1. So you don't see that in formula. I don't actually write times 1 to actually figure out the area under the curve, right? Because remember, it's a continuous distribution function like that. This right here just gives me the value. But to figure out the probability of being within a foot of it, I have to multiply it by 1, or I'm approximating, really. I really should take the integral from there to there. But this little rectangle is a pretty good approximation. And this chart, I, I show you that as, as the total number of moves gets larger and larger, the difference between what the normal probability distribution tells us and the binomial probability distribution tells us gets smaller and smaller in terms of the probability of you ending up 10 moves to the right. And you can change this number here. Let me. Let me change it just to show you. You know, you could change it. You could say, oh, what's the probability of being 15 moves to the? Let me. No, I used the wrong tool. You could say, what's the probability of being 15 moves to the right? And actually, no, that one doesn't. 15 moves to the right. It looks like it kind of. No, that's not. Let's see, the 10. And if I go 
12, it converges. And then if you go to 13, I think that something's happening with the floating point error, because when you get to large factorials, I think something weird happens out here. But like if you do if you do 3, something weird is happening. 5, 10. Yeah, you maybe have to just get even further out. So as for, for 10, you can see clearly that it converges. And I'll, I'll try to figure out why I was getting those weird sawtooth patterns. If you get 11, no, everything is, huh. Maybe it's maybe while I do screen capture, something weird is happening. But anyway, the whole point of this was to show you that if you wanted to figure out the probability of being 10 moves to the right, as you take more and more flips of your coin, the normal distribution becomes a much better approximation for the actual binomial distribution. And as you approach infinity, they actually converge to each other. Anyway, that's all for this video. I'll continue. I'll actually do several more videos on the normal distribution just because I, it is such an important concept. See you soon.